Hi, for this video what I want to do is talk to you about stem and leaf plots. Um, some textbooks do call these stem plots, so if you are studying stem plots it's the same thing. So a stem and leaf plot will take your data set and it will break it into what is known as a stem and what is known as a leaf. The stem can have as many digits as you need. So you can have as many digits as you need in the stem. The leaf can only have the last digit. The key is super important because it tells you how to read the information. So the two with the two, you can pick any number in here, means that it's 22. So for this data set, I would have the numbers 14, 14, 15, 16, 21, 22, 22, etc. And you could continue going down. Um, this would just represent the tens place, and then these would represent the units place. Okay, so a couple of things about stem and leaf plots. These are good for preserving the original data. So if I were to create a histogram of this, it would look the same where I would have, uh, let me switch colors. Uh, I basically could create a sideways histogram with this where you end up with the bars. Well, in a histogram, it doesn't preserve the individual data. So you can see the general shape but you cannot see what the original data values are. You know how many fall in that data set. So I know that there are seven that fall in this row, um, but I don't know what the original data set is. So the histogram will show you the shape, but it doesn't give you the original data. The stem and leaf plot shows you both. So you can see the overall trend. You can see where the center is. You can see where the most values occur, things like that. But, um, with the histogram, you do not see all of this data. Okay, um, It is important, like I said, to have a key to know how to interpret because if you don't have the key, then it's hard for anybody else to look at it and understand what's going on. Um, you can also use this as a tool to help you order your data. So if you have a data set that is not in order from smallest to largest and you don't have technology to help you, then you can use this to help organize your data set from smallest to largest. Um, the disadvantage of a stem and leaf plot is it's not practical for large data sets. If you have thousands of data points, you really don't want to see all of the individual values. You just want to see the overall trend. So I have a couple of examples here. I'm going to do the first one with you. And then after I do the first one, you can always pause the video and try the second one on your own to make sure that you understand the content. Okay, so with this one, notice that our data set on this one is dollars. So the price of gas, 225, 227, et cetera. So we have our data set. If we look at this data set, we can see that it is not in any kind of order. Okay, so if your data set is not in order, what you're going to do is you're going to create an unordered data set. Okay, so we want to make this so that it's not or like we're going to start with it not being in order and then we're going to use the unordered data set to help us put it in order okay so what you want to do is you want to go through and you want to first identify what your smallest value is so for this one our minimum would be two dollars and 19 cents and we also want to identify our maximum so we would need two dollars and 32 cents so like i said before the stem can have as many places as you need the last digit so in this case the hundredth digit um, can only go in the leaf. So I know that I need to have 21, 22, and 23 because my lowest starts at $2.19 and my highest um, ends at $2.30. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to start just with this column. When I'm doing this, I just go down each column. So 225, 226. I would go to where the 22 is because that's the first two digits. And then I would put a five and then I would put a six. And then I'm going to go to the next row. So, or, sorry, next column, not row. And so I would put a seven. And then I would go to the 21 and I would put a nine. Okay. And then I'm going to move to the next column and we would go to the 229. So I would put a nine and then 220. For the next column, we have 225 and 231. 232, 224. And then for our last one, 
we would have a 231 and a 230. Okay, so like I said, it is very important that you include a key because if you don't have a key, then it's hard to interpret this. So a lot of people would just look at this and go, oh, this means 219. Well, the context of this one is gas prices. So you could say that I can pick, like I said, any one of them. So let's say that we pick 22 and the six, okay? And so then at the bottom, we would say that this means $2.26. So by having this key here, it gives you a dollar amount and you can see that your values are there. Okay, for my order data set, I am going to make sure that I put a title on this. So I'm going to take this now and put it in order. Okay, so the title of this would be prices of gas. That way, anybody looking at it knows the context. So anytime you know the context, it's always important to include that in your graphic. And then we would just put our 21, 22, and 23. And now what we can do is we can easily arrange each of these rows in order from smallest to largest. So the 21, 9, that would be my starting one. For the next one, our lowest value is the 0, so I would start with that. The next thing we have is 4. We have two fives, so we do have to list both of those because remember that we had two values that were 225. Okay, and then we would put the six, the seven, and the nine. So now it's in order from smallest to largest. Uh, for the next data set, or for the next row, we would have zero, one, one, two. And it's always a good idea to make sure that you didn't miss anything. So since this was six by two, this is 12 total data points. I can just go through and count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, and I can see that they are all there. And then I'm going to go ahead and put my key again, just so that um, this would be the final organized data set. Okay, so for this next one, if you want to try it on your own, make sure that you understand it. It's always a good idea to make sure you try it on your own. You're going to do the same thing, but just go ahead and pause the video, try it on your own, and then once you are finished, resume watching. All right, so what we have here is we have data that represents the number of text messages sent in a day by a sample of people. Okay, this time we have eight by three, which means that there are 24 data points. We can see that this does not go in order from smallest to largest. Okay, so I'm gonna start with an unordered um, stem and leaf plot just because it'll make it easier. I want to identify my minimum and my maximum, so I know how many um, numbers to include. So since I go from 50 to 90, I would need something for 50s, 60s, 70s, 80s, and 90s. And even if you don't have something that shows up in here, like you do have to go in sequential order. So you, like if you didn't have any 60s, you still have to write it down. It would just be left blank and that's okay. So then what we would do is like I said, and I'm not going to change every color for this because it would take too long, but we're just going to go down each column again. So for the 60, I would have a 6, the 70s, a 2, the 90s, I would put a 2. Going to the next column, I have 68, 74, 59. Now we have 80, 67, 67. 82, 68, 58, 85, 82, 92, 90, 80, 94, 63, 72, 73, and then our last one is 75, 73, and 77. Okay, so you can always go through and count to make sure that you didn't miss any. We should have 24, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. And then we can see that we have four more. Okay, don't forget your key. So your key for this one would be 5, 8, means 58. That way anybody looking at it knows that there's no decimal places or anything else. 
Okay, so then we would transfer it into an order data set. And again, this does give you a much quicker way of putting things in order, um, just because now you don't have to look at the entire data set and try to find the smallest one. You can just look at a smaller number. So we know that the eight and then the nine would go here. For the next one, our lowest one is a three followed by a six. We have two sevens and two eights. Okay, moving into the next data set, we have two twos, two threes, one four, one five, and one seven. Okay, uh, for the 80s, we would have zero, zero, two, two, and five. And for the 90s, we would again have zero, two, two, and four. Okay, so with this one, we could say that it's roughly symmetric. We can look at the overall trend or the overall shape of the data. Okay, we can see that the most occur in the 70s. So that's information that you might want to um, pull out. Let me use the same key that I used on the last one. Okay, um, you could find your minimum value. This would be our minimum. This would be our maximum. So just in case you're wondering, so the minimum would be 58. The maximum would be 94. So um, having it in order does make it easier to find the minimum and maximum. Hopefully this video helped you to understand how to set up a stem and leaf plot. I appreciate you watching. If you have any questions, please let me know. If there are additional topics you would like me to cover, please let me know that as well.